In this session, I want to take a look at Corel's interactive shapes or interactive shape tools. And actually, we'll start down here. A little way down the toolbox here, we have what is called the star tool, and there's a little fly out there. Usually set to the polygon tool, but you've got star, complex star. There's graph, paper, spiral. There's also up here an ellipse, and there's also a rectangle here. We'll start out with the star, with the star and we want to take a look at how we create the star. I've clicked, left-clicked on that star tool icon in the toolbar to select that. I'll come over in my workspace, I'll left click, hold down, start dragging in any direction, I'll start to create a vector star as you can see here. Now if I hold down my control key I'll create a perfect star as you can see here. I'll be constrained to a perfect star but you notice I'm going from left to right as I create the star. However if I hold down my shift and control key I'll start to create a perfect star from the center point. Now, once that's finished, let's go ahead and take a look at this interactive shape object in Corel and how it works. You'll find that all these other shapes work the same. I'm going to go to the shape tool here, and the first thing we're going to take a look at the fact that if I click on any of these nodes, you can see that the shape of my star will change automatically. Left click on any node and move that, and I will change the star, but it's constrained to a pentagon gone there. So we can see that we can change the shape of our star with the nodes. However, if we go back to our pick tool and we look here in the properties bar, we can see we've got some properties that we can work with associated with this star. We've got five points set here now. I could slide that up and it'll change to 26 points. I can also change the sharpness of my star. Bring that up and I'll make the points sharper and longer. If I bring that down, I'll make the points a little bit duller and shorter. So these interactive shaping tools combined with the property bar are very powerful for being able to create custom shapes on the fly. Now, what does all this mean? Well, let's take a look at what we can do with shape tools. Let's say I was going to create a simple shield for a heraldly type design. I've got a number of tools I could work with here. I might want to actually start with a star and we'll see how this works. And We'll keep in mind what we've learned so far about the properties of nodes and line segments. I'm going to change the shape of this star up to right about here. Now I've got this basic shape of a star set up. The next thing I want to do is convert this to curves so I can start working with it with my shape tool. Then I'll go ahead down here and let's say I'll pull, holding down my control key, I'll pull this down, this node to the bottom. I'll lasso and select these two nodes and delete them. Now see the shape I've got there? I've got a radical change in my shape. Now. The next thing I might want to do is pull these arms out here at the bottom, left click, hold down, pull this arm out here. Got a nice shape for the bottom of my shield. Now what I want to do is I want to change these two lines to curves, but to do that all I'm going to do, come up here, after I've lassoed them, left click, drag across, lasso your nodes, come up and click the plus icon here, or I could right click and select add node, as you can see there. Now, when I go ahead and select all four of these nodes and delete, I'll get two perfect curves. So here, very quickly, I've been able to create a simple shield type design using or building from the star tool working with curves and converting my nodes, which is much faster than going and actually illustrating the shield. Now, this doesn't work all the time, but we'll want to be aware of this while we're working. Now, if I was designing the shield and I wanted to go a little further, I could go to effects and let's go to add perspective and change the shape of my shield a little bit more but keep both sides symmetrical and basically the same and okay we'll right click here and then we'll go right click convert to curves and now I've got more or less basically what is a perfect shield shape now if I want to convert this into some other things for my shield I can go and actually go up here and let's say we'll go and change our outline here to about that thickness. Actually, I'll go even a little thicker than that. I'll go down here to 6.25. I want to go one more. Let's try 1.25. That's actually pretty good right there. Now, all I need to do with this is go to a range and select convert outline to object. Now, that converted my outline on this vector to an object. Then I could right click on this and select break curve apart. Now, I've got two black objects here. I've got the front and the back. I'll hit Control Z, and I realize that my large outline of the shield is in the front, so I just right click on that and select Order and select to back of page. It's going to go to another layer, that's okay for now. 
click this and fill this with a white, and all of a sudden I've got a shield shape that I can start to work with in Corral Draw to create a shield type graphic, say for a Harley design or something like that. And I was able to do that perfectly and very quickly working with interactive shape tools. Now let's say behind my little shield here that I've set up, I want to put a starburst. Well, I could go back to my star tool, go ahead and start here right in the center of my shield, more or less, holding down shift and control, create my star, then come up here and let's say we'll give this 20 points. I've got a 20 point star there. I could right click, order, and we'll go up here. We'll actually move up a little bit in the workspace here and bring this down just a bit so we can see what's going on here. And I'll go ahead and right click and select order and I'll say to back of page, select OK, fill that with black. Let's do that one more time. Order to back of page and that doesn't want to work. So we've got some problems with our layers here. So the next thing we want to do is go to object manager and see what we're dealing with here. Next I'll grab all of these power clip ellipse and all these things here and I'm just going to grab all of this and move it right up into here where I've got my bitmaps. Now if I go ahead and click order and to back of page it should go to the back and select OK and now that's to the back of the page. Now with this all being set up like it is you can see how very quickly working with interactive shape tools I can create cool design elements. And I might want to add a few more points to that. And actually that looks pretty good right there. Now another thing that we can do that when we're working with shapes is we've got some other tools that are called the artistic media tools and those are up here where our Bezier tool is here. Now say I wanted to create a wing for this design I've got my presets here I can come out and select a stroke style I've also got some other brushes I can work with here but let's say we'll create a little wing like shape here and we'll just go like this here and then this now that this is selected we're creating another shape coming from draw to break this apart all it would do is hit control and K and that will break that apart or take that off of my line. Now there's other training on the site relating to brush strokes, but for now we'll work with just this. Now I can take this shape, which is basically a wing type shape, delete some nodes here and tweak this shape into a wing very quickly in Corel Draw. And I'll actually delete this node too. And I'll come up here and make some adjustments with this particular node. Then I might want to actually create a little triangle. So I'll go over here and I'll get my poly tool and I'll set my points to three and I'll create a little triangle here and I might want to put some indents kind of like feather shapes in this now I'm moving quickly for the sake of the tutorial but I could put this right here kind of like that and I might put another one down here and rotate it a little bit and I can select both of these hold the shift key down and go over here and click front minus back now I've got a kind of a little kind of shape going on here with this wing it kind of fits what goes on with feathers. We'll zoom in and tweak that just a little bit. And I'll make some minor adjustments with my shape tool. I'll move this node over to here and I'll bring this node back down here. Double click there and delete that node. And I've got this little wing shape going on very quickly. Now I can bring this over to my graphic and I'll bring this right over here. And we'll go ahead and fill that with a black. And then what I'll do is start duplicating this left click hold down now you can see I want to change my rotation point here so I'll bring that rotation point down here right about to there and then I'll go ahead and I'll hold down shift and control and that'll let me rotate and resize these wings at the same time but I wanted to hit my right mouse button while I was doing this so I'll hit control Z and I'll come down and I'll hit my right mouse button here's wing one and do the same hit the right mouse button wing three and do the same wing four and feather five. Now very quickly I've created a wing type design here. I'll right click and go order to back of page. Select OK and then I'll duplicate this over on the other side. I'll mirror that and we'll do the same over here and we're all set. So very quickly working with our interactive shape tools and some other media in Corel Draw, we're able to create very fast vector shapes and vector design elements on the fly if we know how to use our shaping tools and other tools in the CorelDRAW Graphics Suite toolbox and in the graphics application itself. So keep an eye out for these interactive shapes because these are the way to go when you're creating your graphics.